Okay, so what we've talked about already in chapter four is we've been talking about this idea about solving systems of equations, right? One way that we've talked about is by graphing. So for example, let's say that we have the system Four x plus y equals two, and then x minus y equals three. To graph this, what's the first thing we wanted to do? Yeah, we want to write these as y equals mx plus b equations. So we can subtract four x from both sides of the first equation. And then the second equation, we have to do two things, right? We have to subtract x from both sides and then also divide by negative 1. So we're going to get these two equations. And what we're going to do is we're going to write an x, y, or make an xy table for each of them. So for the first xy table, maybe I pick x to be 0. When I plug 0 in, I get 2. And then I like to pick something that's a little bit further apart um, rather than just like 1 or something right next to it. Um, maybe I'll pick, uh, I guess, 4. When I plug 4 in, negative 4 times 4 is negative 16 plus 2 is negative 14. Over here, I'll pick 0 for x, that'll give me negative 3. And maybe I'll pick 3 for x, and that'll give me 0. So now all I need to do is graph my points here. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So for the green graph, I have zero, two, and then four, negative fourteen. Or not, what do you get when you plug it four in for x? Negative 4 times 4 is negative 16, plus 2 is negative 14. All right, we're just plugging things in. Oh my goodness, what did I do wrong, though? Yeah, that's dumb. Why would I do that? I don't know. You ever make a mistake happen to me? There's 0, 2, and there's that one, and then, ooh, boy, that wasn't straight at all. Boy, that could be, that's not very good either, but we'll let it slide, I guess. What would I ideally be using to do this? Yeah, ruler, straight edge, whatever you want to call it. That one was a little bit better. So my intersection is this point here. Looks like maybe the point 1, negative 2. Right? I was a little bit messy. How can I um, figure out for sure what that point is? Yeah, I can plug it back in and see if it gives if it satisfies both of the equations. Uh, well, we need the graph to find it. So 4 times 1 plus negative 2 is 2. 
and 1 minus a negative 2 is 3, so I'm quite certain that this is my solution. So that was graphing. We had talked about that a little bit, right? We've also talked about substitution. So if I take that same system, I can solve this using substitution. So remember for substitution, the idea was we were going to isolate or pick one of the two equations. I'm going to label them equations A and B. Isolate one of the variables from one of the equations and then substitute it into the other equation. Uh, so which would be the only bad choice here? The only bad choice would be to try to isolate the 4x. Why would that make be a bad choice? You're going to end up with fractions, right? And you prefer not to have to deal with those unless you have to. And if you do, it's not that big of a deal. But if you can avoid it, why not avoid it, right? So let's isolate one of the other variables. It doesn't matter which of the other ones. They're all going to be about the same. For the sake of argument, I'm going to isolate this y. So I can do that by just subtracting 4x from both sides. I'm going to refer to this as equation C. What I do with that then is I'm going to plug equation C and use that into equation B to get rid of my y's. So I'll have x minus, but instead of y, I'm going to have negative 4x plus 2. Is okay here. So now I just need to simplify. So we'll distribute the negative. x plus 4x is 5x. If I add 2 to both sides, I get 5x is equal to 5. And if I divide both sides by 5, I get 1. Now that I have that, I can find my value for y. So I'm going to do that by just plugging my answer back into equation C. It doesn't really matter which one of them you plugged it back into. You could have used A or B also, but C is a little bit quicker because the y is already separated for us. So we can say our answer is 1, negative 2, which jives very nicely with what we saw graphically. And because we didn't have to do any estimation here, we don't really need to certify this to go back and check it. You certainly could, and it would still check out just like we did before, but because we had to kind of estimate our graph, you know, if my picture is kind of messy, it's sometimes not entirely clear what that answer is supposed to be, so plugging it back in to check it is good to know if you just did a poor job of estimating. We feel okay about substitutions? I want to talk now about elimination. I don't think we've talked about this yet, have we? Okay. So... I'm going to use this same system here, at least as a starting point. Oh, excuse me. And again, I'm going to call these equation A and B. So the idea for elimination is I want to take some multiple of equation A and some multiple of equation B and if 
get them to be multiples such that when I add the two equations together, one of the two variables cancels out. So if I look at the two equations right now, I notice as they're currently written, if I added them together, the y's would cancel out. Does everybody see that? So the multiple of equation A that I need to use is just 1 times equation A. And the multiple of equation B I need is just 1 times equation B. So if I add those together, I'm going to get 5x I'm going to get 0 equals 5. I now have an equation with just one variable in it. If I divide both sides by 5, I get 1. And then to solve for y, I can just go back and plug this into any of the other locations. So say I plug that answer back into equation A. I'd have 4 times 1 plus y equals 2. Or if I subtract 4 from both sides, I get negative 2. What do you notice here about elimination? It's pretty fast, right? It's quick. Here's the one of the really nice things about elimination. As these systems get more complicated, if we add more variables and more equations, elimination, while it gets a little bit more complicated, doesn't get nearly as bad as substitution. Uh, one of the nice features of elimination is each time we do an elimination, everything gets a little bit smaller. So everything could you know, get simpler as you go where that's not the case with substitution, uh, where everything kind of stays the same size. Let's look at another example here. So right now, as things are currently written, I can't just add equation A and equation B together and have anything cancel out, right? Everybody can see that? So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make a decision here about which variable I'm going to try to make cancel out. Does one of these two look a little bit easier to deal with, X or Y? Okay, why did you pick the Y? What was that? You have a negative and positive. Okay, fair enough. Uh, look at the X's though. What do you notice about the X's? They're both positive, but what about the coefficients? Right. 2 is a mul or 4 is a multiple of 2 already. What do you notice about 3 and 5? They're relatively prime, right? There's no common divisor to them. So it'll be a little bit easier, just a little bit, to deal with trying to eliminate the x's than it would be the y's, because you have equations that are, are the constants, I should say, the coefficients are already multiples of each other. So if I were to eliminate x's, and we'll do the same thing with y's here in a second. So to eliminate the x's, what do I need to multiply equation a by so that the x's would cancel? Negative 2. Everybody agree with that? Because negative 2 times 2x would give me negative 4x. And when I add that to positive 4x, I get 0. So my plan is going to be negative 2 times equation A, and then I'm going to add that to equation B. Negative 
negative 2 times 8. That's equation A. That's what I said right here. Negative 2 times equation A. So the whole thing, all of the parts, both sides, every single thing gets multiplied by the negative 2. So I get then y is negative 6 over 11. Is okay there? To solve for x, what am I going to have to do? Plug that back into one of the two places. So when I subtract 18 over 11 from both sides, to subtract 18 over 11 from 8, what do I need to have? Common denominator. What would the common denominator be between 8 and, or between 1 and 11? Just 11, right? So 88 minus 18 is 70. And then we'll multiply both sides by a half. If I reduce as I multiply, 70 divided by 2 is 35. So I'd say 35 over 11, comma, negative 6 over 11. My apologies for the fractions on this one. I made this up on the fly, and, you know, that's what happened. Let's look at what we'd have to do if we had chosen to eliminate the y's, because it's really not much of a difference here. So if I want to make the y's cancel out, what coefficient are both the y's need to have? What coefficient should they have? What's the least common multiple between 3 and 5? 15. So what do I need to multiply equation A by? 5. And what do I need to multiply equation B by? Three. Everybody's okay with that? And because the signs are already opposite, I can just use positive five and negative five, right? Everybody's okay with that? I forgot what this was already. Ten. That gives me 22x equals 70. And when I divide both sides by 22, I get 70 over 22, which reduces to 35 over 11. So to get the y, then, I can plug this back in. So 2 times 35 over 11. So 3 there. Um, minus 3y equals 8. So 2 times 35 over 11 is 70 over 11. And when I subtract 70 over 11 from both sides, I need to have a common denominator. The common denominator there would be 11. 88 over 11 minus 70 over 11 is 18 over 11. Uh, 
And then when I multiply both sides by negative one-third, I get that y equals, I notice that the 3 and the 18 can reduce, negative 6 over 11. So I get 35 over 11, comma, negative 6 over 11. That's what I got before, right? Everybody okay with this idea of elimination? And really, I think this is the, of the two algebraic methods we've looked at so far, I think this is the superior one. I think it's the, I think it scales better to more complicated problems. I think when it works, it's like super easy. Uh, and even in the worst case scenarios, it's not so bad. What is the one thing that we have to have, though, in order for the elimination to work? has to be set up so that like the x's, y's, and the constants you're okay, are all lined up like that, right? So what would you do if they weren't all lined up like that? Rearrange your equation so that they do line up like that. Oh, okay. Um, you guys have questions about eliminations.